on this episode, the vision is clear. What do I want to do now? We create life. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and as always, we fall in love with our creation. Isn't it awesome? It's so awesome. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDevs Academy. Welcome to episode 58 of our advanced Schmap tutorial. And today we are still working in the brains, but I think it's gonna be the last episode. Fingers crossed. Um, a load of brain edit. This has been a long, long path, but we are here finally. So we have, um, we have a really sophisticated brain uh, behavior system for our for our uh, different enemies. We can create really interesting uh, pattern, behavior patterns. We can make them follow different paths. We can make them even follow the player uh, themselves, you know. This is cool stuff, this is cool stuff. Something that we wanna do today is we wanna uh, see, or we wanna like test drive the system. We're gonna see if we can create more complex behavior. Um, behavior that would be, you know, applicable to a boss fight. Uh, and we want to maybe add one last element, which I'm not exactly sure about. This one is I'm a bit like question mark, question mark. And that is, um, I want to be able to loop multiple times, but like a set amount of time. So maybe repeat an action three times, something like this. All right, so let's start here. Let's try to make this loop thing going. First of all, we're gonna include our command. And something that I'm, I'm kind of amazed by is like, there's not too many commands that we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just nine different commands. And this is a bit surprising. I would have expected, you know, a, a programming system for enemies to have more commands. The fact that it's just, uh, just nine, is kind of amazing. Okay, so uh, LOP loop is what I, what I want to add. And then let's go to, oops, that's not where I want to go. Let's go in here. And then, so the way I want to do the loop command, I was, I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking about this and I'm, I'm, I'm eager to try, to try one solution. Uh, loop. Um, so the way I want to do this, and maybe actually I'm gonna copy this out and I'm gonna or cut it out and I'm gonna put it uh, right underneath go to because I feel like loop and go to belong together. Um, so there's two parameters as always. Uh, parameter number one is gonna be how many times we're repeating things. Parameter number two is like kind of like the line that it should go to. So whenever the brain processing arrives at the loop command, uh, it counts up a counter and then it goes um, to a certain line, back to a certain line of the loop. And then it goes through the loop again. And when it counters that loop again, it counts up that counter and goes up and so forth. And then once it re the counter reaches a certain set number, then it continues, it doesn't go back. It doesn't, like depending on how many, how many times we went through that process already, uh, it will then skip to the next line, not return uh, to a previous line. Uh, and it, this is maybe not quite as flexible, but I think, I think doing something that, that is simpler and maybe not quite as flexible uh, is maybe the way to go here, because I don't think we need that additional complexity. And if we do need that additional complexity, we can still change it later, right? Okay, so let me let me think about this. So we're gonna go e dot loop equals um, e dot dot loop and e dot loop plus one or one. Okay, um, and then we're gonna go if e dot loop is smaller than parameter one, then and then we're gonna basically execute a go to command, which is means e dot bry equals parameter two. Like this. Okay, this ternary here is like, I just included it because loop might not be property that we defined for an enemy and I don't want to define it for every enemy. I don't know, I thought it would be maybe nicer to include it like here. Um, so yeah, so if there is a loop set, then we're gonna add one to the loop and we're gonna assign it to the loop variable. 
uh, or we're going to overwrite our loop variable with that uh, or loop property with that. If loop is not assigned, then we're going to assign it to one. And then we're going to check if the loop is um, the number of loops that we went through it is smaller than parameter one. If it's smaller, then we jump to location indicated to the line indicated by parameter two. Uh, otherwise, we can just continue with our with our lives. Uh, and I think when we continue with our lives, uh, we want to also reset the loop. Now, um, else e dot loop equals zero because there might be multiple loops in, uh, for a for a given a given enemy. Okay, let's try this. Save. I'm gonna create a new brain. You know what? We haven't used the green UFO yet. So why don't we use the green UFO? Uh, and we're gonna make 64. I wanna put it in the center of the screen because this is, just, this is like a test UFO right now. Um, and let's wait, let's wait a second. Let's just wait a sec. I'm just, I'm a little bit nervous about this. I don't know why I'm nervous. Uh, then I'm gonna fire. Okay. And then we're gonna wait um, half a second. And then we're gonna lop. And we wanna loop until uh, location number four. And we're gonna loop it uh, three times. And then afterwards, uh, I want to um, do a heading a zero zero and then animate speed um, all the way up to two by zero point zero one let's try that so we will loop, shoot three times and then accelerate away okay maybe a bit faster okay it shoots three times and then accelerates away let's decrease the shooting frequency yes Okay, this is good. One, two, three. Yeah, okay. So let me see if we can make it six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Oh, by the way, can we, yeah, we have we have the trails as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I exited without exporting. I didn't export, right? But that was intentional, I swear. Because what I wanna do now is I wanna actually try to um, use all those abilities to create like a boss fight. Let's see if we can make a boss fight happen, hmm? All right, so uh, first of all, let us let us do a, wait. Oh no, that's the wrong brain. We wanna create a new brain. We wanna do a setup. Uh, let's do this guy. Let's, let's just assume this guy is our boss. Um, then we're gonna set this to zero and then we're gonna exit. And then I'm gonna actually already export. And man, mm, you know what? I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna put put something on a to-do list. Not not right now, but eventually, uh, we're gonna maybe think about auto save because this happens too many, too often now. This happens too often that I just press escape, and and nothing happens. All right, so we're gonna try to maybe recreate the boss that we had in our basic schmuck tutorial. Um, so let us do like um, heading zero two. No, it, he will fly in slowly. Zero point seven maybe something like this, and then we're gonna do an animate speed um, down to zero. Yeah, maybe then down to zero. Um, minus zero point uh, zero one. Yeah, this is good. And then we're gonna wait for, um, let's wait for 60. Uh, and then just like, I'm gonna add, a, I'm gonna add a yeet here. <laughs> so we can measure out exactly when, when he actually stops. Seems like he, that's, 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 that's good. Um, okay, so now I want to set the heading to zero point. I want to move, um, make him move sideways. So my minus zero point uh, two five. No, wait, um, zero point two five, right? Is that how it works? 
Okay, um, but I'm gonna set the speed to zero and we're gonna animate speed up to, well, I'm not sure what the speed is, should, should be, maybe 0 0.5 and then 0 0.01 again. Okay, uh, the acceleration is a bit slow, increasing the acceleration and the final speed is a bit slow. Okay, this is good. Oh, I, I realized I, it might be a good idea <clears throat> to have a button that makes the UI disappear. I think that might be a good idea. Okay, let's export this. Um, let's, I just added, let's make it the button number three, make a, the UI disappear. Um, show UI true, update. Update here. If key equals three, show UI equals not show UI. And then when we're drawing, um, this is good stuff. Um, enemies is good, muzzle flash is good, draw menu. So we're gonna go if show UI then. Uh, and this includes that little execution line. Right, so now with three, we can make the UI disappear so we can better see. Yeah, okay. It's, um, this is also um, a situation where it's kind of useful to see <clears throat> the little acceleration arrow because I can tell uh, when the enemy, the boss, reached its um, its um, target speed. So this is kind of nice. Um, yet now I have to think about this because <laughs> um, this was kind of like the flying in animation, right? Um, so what we want to do now, maybe have a second brain for the actual thing that where, where he goes back and forth, right? Or is that something that we're all gonna keep in, in one brain? Let's let's make it in one brain and then we can maybe change it later. So again, we're gonna wait, uh, but this time we're gonna wait. Let's 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 say sixty pixels, and then when one once we do that, we're gonna animate the speed to z minus zero point eight at pace zero point zero two. Okay, but now obviously this is um, this is because the acceleration is fairly slow. Once it gets up to speed, oh wait 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 wait! I need to I need it's supposed to be minus. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna wait until um, he moves sixty pixels. Let's let's try sixty pixels for now. And then if we do that, we're gonna animate the speed to 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.02. Okay, uh, we're not waiting enough pixels. Let's, let's go with 90 pixels. Oh, I just realized um, the direction of the arrow is wrong. The, the the little arrow indicator doesn't deal well with negative speeds. Um, then we're gonna add a, a weight for another ninety, and then we're gonna do a go to eight, um, and then we're gonna basically switch back again, right? So uh, it's nineteen then. So now we should have our little guy flying back and forth. Isn't it awesome? It's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's totally doing it. Okay, let's save this. Uh, and uh, what I want to do next is... What do I want to do now? Um, I want to fix that little indicator that, that, wasn't, that was a bit weird. Um, so... Yeah, and draw brain. 
uh, here's where this is happening. So we need to make uh, kind of take into account the speed. Uh, something we can do here is okay. Local my ang equals e dot ang. If spd uh, if e dot spd uh, is smaller than zero, then e dot uh, my ang equals minus my ang, and then we're gonna uh, work off this my ang thing. And then when we multiply it by the speed, uh, we are going to go absolute speed. So we're always going, going to go with, is it absolute speed though? Yeah, yeah it's absolute speed. Um, so we're always going to go with the um, po with positive speed, even if it's negative. But if the speed is negative, then we're gonna just going to, oh, actually my angle is, um, equals minus equals 0 0.5. Um, we're going to make the angle, basically, we're going to pretend the angle goes the other direction. Uh, and I think that might be, that might be good. What? Oh, I didn't save. I didn't save again. All right, so I recovered this and this is what it looks now. Really nice, really nice. Mm. Oh man, I love it. Um, I, I have one problem and that is um, I do, we don't see the trails because the trails only get really saved, so to speak, when uh, the mm, when the thing, when the where our enemy leaves the screen. And I'm not sure how best to tackle this. I, do I always want to save them? Even if, if it gets reset otherwise, I, mm, it's, it's kind of difficult. Let's try this. Let's just try it so that um, we're always gonna save the trails when here. Um, so yeah, this is happening when, we, uh, when the protagonist leaves the screen, but maybe. Maybe we should always do it. An update function. Oh, okay, I'm doing it here. Um, yeah, okay, let, let's just do it here. Um, this is obviously for editor, but, and then as well here. So this is where we are resetting the enemy and I'm just like saying, yeah, if we're setting the enemy, then then we're gonna also save the trails. Let's see if that will maybe cause some mistakes. That that just doesn't work. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this if statement doesn't never never applies. We don't need that if statement. Let's try this now. Okay, so now the problem is that uh, we might, for for some reason, uh, you know, delete the enemy, and then we still have the trails for from other from a previous time, or we might, you know, the trails are a, a, a bit chaotic right now. But the nice thing is that when we do some changes. Now the trails are get saved even if the enemies don't leave the screen and so this gives a better idea if you know if it's now I can tell if it's centered better right so that's kind of nice uh, okay um, what it's missing here is first of all I want to um, I want um, shooting to happen that's one of the things I want to add to this uh, to this boss fight and then I want to transition to a different phase after a couple of repetitions. First let me do the shooting. So hmm this is a bit of an interesting thing because the way we do shooting we repeat sh shooting is with wait commands and right now we're using this wait command also to time the movement. So there might be a later on a solution for this, but for now let's just like let's just do like a fire uh, something we could, for example, do is we could, in a fire command, we could add a property. Like one is maybe like the, 
the kind of bullets that you fire and the other property, the second parameter would be, you know, how many times you fire something or like maybe there's going to be a toggle for firing. It's like now fire this shot uh, every couple of seconds f uh, until it, I stop you, you know, um, something like this. Um, this is something that we should need should put a pin on. It's kind of difficult to make re repetitive fire happen right now. It's, it creates like very complex um, complex code for the enemy behavior. So maybe the firing should be something that is on on a toggle when we have a we have we have a big enemy like here. Um, let me let me just like put a bunch of fire commands in here. Uh, does that even work? Yeah, there we go. There is our fire. Now it just shoots twice. That's not great. Um, but I'm actually the thing I'm more interested in. Oh, by the way, uh, now the code got really long. And we cannot actually see the code anymore, so we actually had to include a scroll. So let's do that first. But I am going to export now. <laughs> Very important. Okay, so we need to scroll the menu. That's interesting. Um, so let's go UI scroll equals zero. <clears throat> and then we do, we'll be drawing the menu. And here's where we're drawing things. So. Oh, there's already a scroll Y. Oh, really? There's a scroll Y already? Oh, I already have the capability. Oh, I totally already have the capability. Yeah, yeah, because the table is still there. It's still there. The code is still there. And it's no problem. It's no problem at all. Oh, I, I thought we had a problem here, but nah. Okay, so um, let's go to the update function of that menu thing. Um, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like this. Now we're going to copy this thing out and we're going to paste this right into our brain. <laughs> into our brain. <laughs> um, right after we decided where things are happening, this is the scrolling. Just to make sure interaction. Um, just like visually indicating where things are beginning. Uh, and then here, when we doing the update setup, I always want to scroll Y to be zero. So if we are <clears throat> have editing it set up, I don't want any, any scrolling to be happening. So let's see if this works. Yeah, totally works. Might sh should be maybe a bit more um, sensitive to going down. Uh, so let's go to the brain. Um, yeah, a little bit more sensitive. Right, and then I, as I said, when I'm drawing the, the menu I, the, the non-interactive menu, which is kind of like those buttons and everything, um, those are actually not supposed to be affected by the scroll. I do not want to scroll them. Yeah, this is good. This is good stuff. Totally good. So now I can create longer code. Oh, by the way. Oh yeah, see now the indicator is also not affected by the by the scroll. So there's little, mm, lots of little stuff that I need to pay attention to, but it's good. It's good. It's good that we're doing it now and not later in production. One plus scroll X, one plus scroll X. We're not going to scroll in X direction, but I'm typing it here anyway, just in case for some reason, maybe later on we will have that. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, okay, let's try that. exactly what we want. Cool. Uh, always exporting if I can, saving this, run. Okay, so again, let's make it so that um, this repeats a couple of times and then we're gonna switch to a different, different brain. So again, we're gonna go, go lop. Uh, let's say it goes three times and then it, it 
it goes to 19. And then we're going to remove this. One. Two. Three. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so this worked. I'm gonna oops, I'm gonna export. Yeah, it would be nice if if we could um take a position of an enemy and and use this as a starting position for an ah, but whatever. Um okay, so now we're gonna create a new brain. Uh again, we're gonna use the same oops, uh, same enemy. Uh I'm gonna position it slightly lower. Uh maybe not quite as low. Maybe a bit lower. Ah, seems seems good. And then twenty twenty. Yeah, that seems good. And and so from here, I want want to make it so that maybe it does the thing that we did in uh, again in the basic schmatt tutorial where it goes around the screen, right? Um, so I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna go heading zero. Uh, what is the speed that we're operating um, at? Where well, was it? Zero point eight. 0 0.8 seems like good speed. So now it goes down. Uh, actually, uh, let's do an animate speed to 0 0.8. Um, yeah, like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then at, we're gonna wait. Oh. We just got a new coffee machine and there's gonna be a lot of packages, accessoires to our new uh, uh, coffee machine. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna wait a couple of um, pixels. I'm not sure how many, let's, let's go with 100. And then we're gonna animate direction to heading. Um, so we're going down. Um, I think it's minus 0 0.25. At a speed of 0 0.1, let's try that. <laughs> Negative 0 0.1. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Um, just waited a little bit too long. Um, let's go 80. And the oh, uh, we don't need that. Um, this needs to be a bit shorter. Give me the indicators. The indicators are, are really good. Yeah, um, I want this animation to be even slower because it's, it's, a, it's a chunky boy, right? It's a chunky, chunky boy. And I need that boy to be, to be uh, a bit, there should be a bit of an inertia happening. Uh, so I think that's maybe, it might be a good curve we did there. Oh, still less, 60. Yeah, a 65. Uh, a bit too much, 62. Yeah, okay, that's good. And then we're gonna wait another 62. And then we're gonna animate direction. Um, so I guess we need to go further negative. Ah, that doesn't feel great. Um, zero point five, and then zero point zero four. So now we're going up. Oop. No. Oh, interesting. So, so that needs um, more waiting time. Seventeen. That needs even more waiting time. Okay, uh, 77. Seventy-five. And it's just really nice that we can like see the preview always here, so we can we can figure out those numbers because the numbers are a bit wonky, and being able to, to figure out those numbers is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, this is good. And then we're gonna wait. Uh, 62, 
and we're gonna go ADR um, minus 0 0.75 minus 0 0.04. Just gonna keep doing this. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I know, I wonder why the waiting time is slower this time around. Okay, okay. So what I want to do to do now I, is I want to slow it, actually make it slow down. So we're gonna wait um, for like ten frames, and we're gonna animate. Um, uh, animate speed down to zero, zero point zero one. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. Longer still. Longer still. I want it um, to stop exactly in the center. Oh, almost good, almost good, 39. Yeah, going around the world, huh? Oh, uh, 30, 30, 36, 30 shucks. <laughs> Yeah, that seems good. Uh, and then we're going, we're basically, let's export this. And then we're just gonna basically return to um, brain number eight, right? Um, so from here on out, uh, we're gonna do this. Yeah, so from here on on, I want to do um, eight, 10. So I'm gonna go to break num back to brain number, Eight and position ten. Oh, actually, no. I I want to wait a little bit. I want to wait for fifty. <laughs> this totally works. <laughs> okay, so it goes back and forth a couple of times. Oh no, it flies away, what? Oh, I didn't put a, another go-to in there. Okay, um, go-to, uh, brain number nine, one, right? Let's export this. I should have maybe less did, done less repetitions. Now it goes around the world. Ah, yes. Um, now we do get a bit of a problem. First of all, let's um, let's do the repetitions. Let's do less repetition. Let's just do one repetition. It's fine. Um, but then, like we're wait, and then I want to actually make it because I want to make it to slow down. So animate speed down to zero, um, zero point zero two, and then we're gonna wait until uh, for thirty. 30 frames, um, 9 1. Um, go to 9 1. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we have like two different, um, two different um, uh, phases of the boss and we can switch to, between the two, two different phases using go to statements. 
and we can make um, you know the boss move um, back and forth uh, a set number of times you can specify how many times it goes back and forth that's great that's what we wanted uh, there is two things I noticed here that I want to pay attention to that's something that we're gonna fix not right now I kind of want to move on from this point but I do want to uh, fix this at this capability later on uh, one thing that you might have noticed that once this loop repeats a couple of times the boss kind of shifts away and that's because it's like you know when you go through this loop you cannot guarantee, you know, with the, the way we move the boss around, but you cannot guarantee that the boss ends up at this specific location, right? It's sometimes it's just a couple of pixels lower than it started out at. And that's obviously a problem because at some point, uh, you know, um, when you, once you have multiple phases, once the go, boss goes through multiple phases, he it will start to shift on the screen. So I think it would be good to have something like... Um, um, Position go to. Uh, by the way, did, why did I, I, did, I deleted the auto <laughs> space? So we need uh, like a position go to function. So it's like um, a command for the for the boss fight to be like, okay, I want you to go to position this and this on the screen because the next phase begins at that position, right? <clears throat> I think this is important to 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 implement something like this. And the other thing that we noticed, but that's something that, that we kind of have to keep in mind as we move on to the bullets is like, how do I fire multiple bullets? Like how it's kind of difficult to keep the boss firing or keep an enemy firing as it's moving. And if the movement is interesting, or complicated, right? Um, we might have to implement a bullet system that allows us to fire multiple bullets in rapid succession without having to issue um, um, those commands in, in the behavior. So we're gonna say like fire shot this and the shot this includes five bullets in quick succession, you know? But that is something I wanna discuss as we move on to the bullets. Which brings us to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the doggy zone. So I have two big challenges for the doggy zone because we are, you know, and we are entering a new era of of develop, developing this game. Um, first of all, I want you to think. I want you to think how to create a bullet pattern system. Think about it. I want you to marinate in this problem because I've been marinating this problem too and it's not easy. Obviously we could kind of recreate kind of like a system like here, kind of like make bullet behavior system, but I don't know, that's not exactly the problem that we're having with the bullets. Maybe just like asking the questions, like what should a bullet system actually achieve? Like what do we want from a bullet system? And task number two for Doggy Zone, which is not necessarily something we're gonna do in the next episode, but we're gonna to have to do eventually, is, all right, we have a brain system. Let us carry this brain system over into our main game. How about making those behaviors that we created here, how about making those happen in the main game? Just try it out. That's a cool challenge for the Doggy Zone. Yes, yes, yes. And at the end of this episode, as with every episode, and I want to extend huge thank you, my gratitude to the people who are supporting this show on coffee.com. They are making this show possible and I would like to thank you so much for it. Coffee.com slash lazydevs is the address if you want to join the circle of supporters of this show. And as always, I also wanted to read a comment. This one is from actually from the Lazy Devlog 24, from the public Lazy Devlog that I released some time ago. Now, <laughs> this is one is by Sefer One, and they wrote, "I suggest you to use Pomodoro technique if you're not already for when you need to do long, energy-consuming stuff. That's helped uh, it a lot throughout throughout the days." Um, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with the Pomodoro technique. Um, uh, there is a video I made uh, about. Um, we are all game beginners about how I make pork like and I reference the Pomodoro technique back then. Yeah, it's useful um, for those who are not in the know, the Pomodoro technique, <laughs> the Pomodoro technique is um, it's just like a timer. You set a timer for 25 minutes 
and you say, you know, you write down what kind of things you want to be working on, what kind of things do you want to get finished by the time you're done with 25 minutes, and just work on this. And then every 25 minutes you do a five minute break, a dedicated five minute break. And that helps you kind of like um, structure your work throughout the day. Um, this, simply because there's a timer running that kind of like helps you focus on the task at hand and not get distracted usually. Um, that's, that's a good suggestion. Um, I, uh, the problem with the Pomodoro technique in my um, experience uh, when I was applying it, it's really great at uh, when you have like lots of small tasks or tasks that are um, broken, easily broken down in smaller chunks. There where it's like, oh, I have to first do this and then do this and do this. Like, for example, it's really great for business work for like, you know, paying bills or something like this, because, you know, paying a bill is not, it's always like a whole bunch of little in between steps, but you can get it done quickly. Um, you can realistically get it done in 25 minutes. Um, what the Pomodoro technique is not really great at is when you have a long continuous task. For example, editing videos. It's not that great at editing videos. Because what are you going to write down? After 25 minutes, I would have want to have edited 10 minutes of video? I don't know. Like, <laughs> and I don't even know what's coming in the video. Maybe there's like a huge complicated edit, edit coming up. And then I just like miss the Pomodoro and then it's like, uh, and if you're behind, it's not like you can edit faster, right? It's not something that you can increase the speed of. Like when you're behind, you're behind. There's just nothing you can do. So um, yeah, so like having a timer running and, and, and uh, applying a lot more stress on this is kind of like not really helpful on uh, on editing video. Um, something that uh, works really well, I would do a shout out at this point, is there is a, a similar uh, related technique com called self-command. Uh, just look it up, self-command. It's made by a different, by actual, by an actual game developer who, who also struggles with focus issues and they um, uh, develop a different technique that doesn't use a timer, um, but it also focuses on, you know, um, taking a big, um, big task and breaking it down into like outcomes that you work towards too. Uh, I kind of liked the self-command a little bit better than Pomodoro because like without a timer, there's like not, not this like, the time I introduced a lot of stress, and I, that's something that I not, didn't quite like with Pomodoro technique. But yeah, um, different different types of work maybe require requires slightly different types of approaches. But yeah, not a bad suggestion. Just like different types of challenges, different types of work maybe require slightly different uh, approaches. Require modifying the approaches a little bit. Anyway, let's move on. So this wraps up the brains. Next time, bullets. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.